Good afternoon, guys. I can another video. Uh, apologizing for my last video that I made on the uh, <coughs> on the I was playing the ghost. <coughs> uh, my my phone got uh, <coughs> it stopped. It was full. The memory was full, so I didn't realize it. <coughs> and it just suddenly stopped when I had the ghost down six to four. I ended up beating the ghost uh, seven to four, but I. I didn't want it. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't have time actually to uh, uh, what's the uh, edit the video. <clears throat> so I just pause the video like that. But I will do more videos playing the ghost with the phone in good condition, so I can you know try to be the ghost. It's not easy to be the ghost. <clears throat> but I was playing good yesterday. I ended up beating <clears throat> most of the time. You know the ghost is pretty strong, but if you play, if you're playing good, you can beat. If you're playing good, you can beat the ghost a couple of times. Uh, <clears throat> oh, also I was gonna uh, let y'all know that when I was watching the video and the, when I was playing the ghost. Uh, when the score was six to three, something like that, I made a mistake that I didn't realize after I was wa watching that video. And uh, I, when I broke the balls, I shot at the two when the one was still on the table. But it didn't make no difference because I lost the game to the ghost. But I was gonna clarify that too. That it, you know, it, it happens a lot when you're playing too. If you're not concentrated good or if you're uh, if you're not focusing on what you're doing I, I don't know what happened to me I didn't look at I didn't see the one <clears throat> but you know luckily that game was I lost that game right when I was shooting at the uh, the six I shot the six went back for the seven and I snuck on myself on the seven and I lost that game to the ghost <clears throat> so it didn't make no difference <clears throat> But I did saw that mistake, so I wanted to clarify, you know, I didn't do it on purpose. <clears throat> Today I was gonna, I was gonna do a story game, uh, I mean a story video. <clears throat> Let me turn this, uh, I was gonna do. Uh, I want to do a story video today. I haven't. I haven't done a, uh, a story video in a long time. The one that I did the last time, I didn't give that many views. But I'm gonna try to do another one. You know, just change the the pattern of videos. You know, do different things. <clears throat> uh, this story is gonna be related uh, when I was. Uh, when I, was, I went to play in a tournament with a couple of friends, uh, some people, I had, I had two guys that we used to go play tournaments all over Atlanta, like 20 some years, 15, 20 years ago. And we used to go play tournaments uh, around, <clears throat> it was like three times a week. Uh, we would go and try to win these tournaments, you know. We, we played pretty close together. Uh, but you know, close to each other. I used to uh, go with a guy named Morty and a guy named Joe, and uh, <clears throat> and we used to go play uh, like three times a week on tournaments. And this time we went to play uh, over here, close to about 30 minutes from here, from Gainesville. Uh, we went to this tournament in a, in a town that was. Uh, Winder, <clears throat> and there was a place there. The name of the pool room was uh, I forgot the name of this place. It was uh, 211. 
they, they call it 211 because it was on the highway 211. It was a small pool room, but they had a big tournament that night. <clears throat> and, uh, and you know, my friends called me and they asked me, hey, Carlos, let's go play pool. Uh, let's go play this tournament. It's going, it's going to be the monthly tournament. The monthly tournament usually is the biggest tournament that they have, you know, on pool rooms because they have it once a month. And they have a weekly tournament, which is, they're smaller. So they said they're gonna have a monthly tournament. It's gonna be, you know, the payout is gonna be pretty, pretty big. So I decided to go. I was kind of tired because I was working all day. So I decided to go, and I went with them over there to the 211 pool room. <laughs> and we got there, you know, and I went in there. And it was around, I think it was around 60 players. It was a pretty big time, between 60 players. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, it was, the, the fee wasn't that much. It was $40 to play. And the owner was adding, I think he was adding like $500 to the term. I mean, it wasn't a real big term, but it was pretty big. <clears throat> so, when we started looking, you know, and we saw that we were like kind of the, us three were like, out of us three, there, it was me and Marty, we were a little above uh, Joe, he was, he played a little under us, like maybe one ball, one ball or two balls under us. And me and Marty played about the same back and forth. Whenever we played together, he would beat me sometimes and I beat him sometimes and it was like that back and forth. <clears throat> So we looked around and it was, uh, it was a lot of players in there, some people that we knew, and there was a, a pro player in there. You know, it, it, there was a, the pro player, it was, a, it was like, we were like, oh man, there's a pro in here. So, you know, we thought it was gonna, you know, win the tournament, because usually when we're going to play tournaments, out of us three, either, I win first, the other guy went first, or you know, one or second or third. We always play in, at the end, close, and the tournaments around Atlanta, the, around Atlanta that we used to go play. But that's when we were playing a lot. I used to play like every day. <clears throat> and then we saw this pro, turn, pro player there, so it was a pro player there. His name was Stevie Moore. Uh, after him, it was like, I think it was like two more that were players close to our level, and there was one that was a little above our level. Uh, he was under the pro, but he was, you know. So we knew that, but well, you never know, tournaments is, you know, tournaments is not the same as gambling. Because tournaments, usually, if you get rolls, if you get shots, and you're playing good, at that moment because sometimes you only you only get one chance at seven games so sometimes on that match <coughs> the balls might not roll your way you have to find a way to make the balls come back start rolling to your way so you can start playing good you know or because a lot of times you be snooker the person that you're playing he'll shoot he'll miss the ball and then you be snooker so sometimes, you know, you just have to make a good hit and try to make the ball go back for another safety. Or, but it's not easy, it's very hard. So that's why tournaments are very hard. Uh, they're not easy to win. You have to be on a very high level to win tournaments, like actually playing every day. And, and you have to enjoy playing tournaments. Because if you don't like playing tournaments, like play for long periods of time, it's very hard to win. <clears throat> So you know the, the match started. They started. Uh, they started selling the. They started selling the uh, player. They, I think the, the pro went for about. I think he went for about a thousand dollars. Something like that. I, I got sold pretty cheap. I got sold for about, about one hundred and fifty dollars. And when they sell you in an auction. 
when you go play in a tournament, they sell you in an auction. Basically, uh, on that particular time, I got sold for $150. So you have the option to buy half of yourself. If you think you're gonna win the tournament, you buy half of yourself. If you know, if you don't, if you don't think you're gonna win or you're gonna place in the finals, a lot of people don't even buy half of yourself because sometimes they just go play in the tournament. They just want to get out of the house or whatever. There's a lot of people like that, so they don't buy half of yourself. Or some people don't have no money. I bought half myself, which was seventy-five dollars. Well, the card cutter is an auction that they have separated from the mo from the tournament money, so it's an extra money. They call it card cutter. And uh, I paid the guy seventy-five dollars. The guy that bought, I think the owner bought me. His name was Ray. He used to own the two eleven pool. He bought me for one hundred fifty dollars, and I gave him half. Gave him seventy-five dollars. And then the tournament started. Usually, uh, those tournaments are. Uh, that tournament was a uh, double elimination. Double elimination means uh, you had two chances to stay in the tournament. You play two. You know, if you play, if you play a match and you lose, you you're not out of the tournament. You lose your spot on the winner's side, and then when it's a double elimination, once you lose your first match, they send you to the loser side. That's why it's called double elimination. So you leave the the winner's area and go to the loser's circle and and you have to play all the losers. So it's better to stay in the winner because you play less and it's better. But sometimes you can't stay on the winners. You will lose your first match and then you will go to the loser's uh, circle. And and once you lose again, twice, you out of the tournament completely. So that's why it's called double limit. And they have some terms which is only single elimination. Now those are very hard terms. You only get one chance. On a double elimination tournament, it's, I mean, you, you still get you still get another chance. So I like to play those better, the double elimination, because you get two chances. And a lot of those times, you can't even make it with two chances because tournaments are very very hard. You have to be concentrated. You have to be focusing 100 percent. You have to be playing the best be able to place close to the first, second, third, fourth. If, if you want to play first, second, third, or fourth, either one of those the spots, you have to be playing perfect, almost perfect. Uh, you have to be getting some rolls. Uh, when I say rolls, I mean some balls running to your, to your side of your game. Because a lot of times they don't, they roll backwards. <clears throat> and and we started, you know, everybody's well, they, they, you know, they sold all the players and they did the cut cutter and the tournament started. I play a few matches. My friends play a few matches. We win. We won. I won like three, four matches. We were doing pretty good. And then we were looking at the pro. You know, he was winning too his matches and all that. And we were playing on bar tables. I'm not a fan of the bar tables. I play on them, but I will, if they give me to choose, there's a bar table, and then there's the eight foot, and then they have the, the uh, tournament table, which is a nine foot. And then they have another one, I think it's a 10 foot or 12, I think. The one that, uh, what's the name of this pro? Uh, I forgot his name of this guy. He's, he's a pro that played yeah, effing race all the time. And he's, he's pretty good. He likes to play those big deals. I, I, pref, I, my, I have played on a, on a 10 foot and I didn't like it that much. I like a 9 foot. The, the, the tournament table, that's the one I like. It's a 9 foot. I'd rather play it now. But we, this tournament was on a on a, on a uh, seven foot table, which is very small table. Basically, it's very easy to play on the table. You just gotta get used to the. You have to compensate the two feet difference. If you play on a nine foot, like I play on a nine foot, 
it's very you just have to play on a, on a, on a seven foot a lot to get to the two feet compensation the areas that you have to you know you have to for your for your set up balls your shape you have to compensate two feet which is 24 inches this much you have to compensate on your shape on everything and and it's different the rails back different and everything's different so you just gotta play on it and get used to it once you get used to the, the, the seven foot table the, the bar table they call it it's very easy to play on but you have to play on it. Uh, I was doing pretty good until I lost my my first match and I got put on I think I don't remember I played this guy that he was a good player forgot his name they put me on the loser side and then my friends got put on the loser side too and they lost they got put out of the tournament I hung in there on the loser side and I kept on fighting all the way once you get to the loser side you have to play almost every player so it's very hard you have to, let's say you're doing good on the winners and then you know the winners if you play, if you stay on the winners and you have 60 players, you probably play like five or six matches. If you don't lose any match, you will go to the hot seat and you will stay there like, you know, like uh, the king seats, they waiting for the loser, all the losers to beat each other and the, the, the only loser that comes back will play you. So he had to beat you twice. And some tournaments they only do it once, but most of the tournaments, 90%, 95%. They, have, they loser have to beat the winner twice when he's in the hot seat, when the king seat. And, uh, well, I was battling over there, you know, on the loser side. I don't like to go to the loser side, but at least it's another chance that you get. Uh, if you go to the loser side, if you go to the loser side in a tournament, and you don't fight with everything you have, you don't last that long. You have to. You have to. You go to lose that you have to give it all. You can't make a mistake. You get put out. <clears throat> and uh, I stay in there, you know. I was oh, I was saying that okay, if you stay in the winner side and you have 60 players, you probably play six matches or seven the most, and that's it on the winner side. If you if you don't lose any match. Now, if you go to the loser side, you play. You have to play. Versus six or seven matches, you have to play around 25 matches around that because you have to beat every loser that there is. You know? So once you beat every loser, then you come back and play the winner, the one that haven't lost at all, and you have to beat him twice. Once or twice. So I stay, you know, for the loser side, you know, battling, and battling, and battling, and then we're playing able. This was an able tournament. I play able, but I like able. It's just that I don't play that much. But, but I, I, you know, I, I would play. Uh, actually, I think it's a pretty good game. It's just that not a lot of people play able anymore. They have all these new games: nine more, ten more, one pocket, of different games. They they play able, but it's not as like before. Back in the old time, we used to play able a lot. Now it's, it's, you know, it's played, but not that much. And we're playing, I was just, you know, trying to stay in the tournament, just giving my best. Uh, finally, after playing, like, I think it was around 3 a.m. in the morning, around 3 or 4 a.m., when I made it to the finals, I made it to the finals, I come back beating everybody you know, on the loser side and then when they call my match around 3 in the morning or 4 they call my match I had to play uh, I was you know feeling pretty you know pretty good because I was coming back and all that but I didn't even know who was playing I was just playing all the whatever whoever they put in front of me right and and I was playing pretty good that night and then they call my match <coughs> and they call my name and then they called uh, Stevie Moore so I'm like oh I had to play the, the pro player that was there for the finals. I had to play him for uh, the winner between me and him. 
will play the, the guy in the hot seat. So the winner will lack second place and the loser will get third place. When they call my match, Stevie Moore and Carlos. They say Carlos and Stevie Moore. And uh, so they call our match. And you know, I, we shake hands. No, I didn't. I didn't know these guys. I think I heard of him before, but I never knew him because, like I said, back in those days we didn't have no internet, we didn't have no cell phone. I don't even think we have beepers yet. <laughs> so I'm talking about a long time ago. So we just, whenever you see somebody, you just that's when you knew the person. You you couldn't just go on YouTube or whatever and put the name of the person and it'll come out like now. You couldn't do that. You didn't know anything. We didn't have nothing. We didn't have computers. The technology was very, very. We had the phones in the house, not like in the office. And then uh, they call her Max. But I remember, you know, since I didn't know who this, I heard that this guy was a pro. But since I didn't know who he was or whatever, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, I'm playing good. I know how I play, so I'm, a, you know, I'm just play. And then, you know, we shake hands, we flip the cone. No, we lie. We lied for the break, and he won the break. Yes, he won the break. He broke first. He won the break, and then he broke, and he ran out. He ran the table out. Playing able, we're playing able uh, anywhere. The, the able on any pocket at the end. But some people call it the last one. We're playing the able anywhere. Right? They play in terms now. So he broke and ran out the first rack. And then now, now when I play him back in that time, we didn't have the. Uh, you know how the tournaments are now, where it gives you advantage on, on when you play pros now, you get advantage because the lower player gets advantage when they play a pro now, because they have the tournaments now where they play alternate breaks. We were not playing alternate break. We were playing a uh, winner break, which is very hard to win that way. Because if, if you're playing a player that is a pro, is a good player, and, he, and the winner breaks, it's very hard. You can you can stay on that you can stay on that table and don't even get to shoot. And the, the guy will run the set out. He will beat you seven. He will play in the race to seven. And uh, and then this guy breaks. But something weird happened when whenever we have played a set with him because it happened to him and it happened to me. He broke. He made a ball and he ran the table out and he won the game. And then he broke and he didn't make anything. Right? So it was my shot. He just broke for me. And I and he spread the balls out good. So I went over there and ran that table out. And I won that game. I won that game. And then I rocked the balls. I broke. And I made couple of balls and I ran that, that table out and I ran the table out four times on Stevie Moore. Four times. I, he beat me in the first game and he didn't make a ball. And then I come and I ran the table out the first set, the first game. Then I I broke and ran three I beat him I beat him four games straight, which he was he got ahead of me one zero and then he he broke and didn't make anything. I ran the table out, made it 1-1, and then I ran three more racks. I made it 4-1. And then I broke and I didn't make anything. He comes and run the table out, and he catches up to me to 4-3. He ran, you know, he ran two racks. And then the only time when we didn't shoot, it was when we break the balls and we didn't make anything. That's it. We were playing. He was playing good. I was playing good. He runs two. Two, uh, two tables that he comes four three and then he breaks and he he breaks dry and then I I ran the table out made it five three and then I wrecked the balls and I 
break the balls and I run out, made it six three. I was on the hill. And then when I'm on the hill, I break, guys. And I didn't make anything. He runs out. I had a six three. He runs out. He comes back and runs out to make a hill hill. As I was just I thought I thought I was gonna lose that match. Because he was six three and then you know I broke you know, I was on the hill and I broke and nothing that's why I don't like about those bar tables a lot of times you you, you know you just it's very hard. You have to you have to practice on it to get the break good on those tables. And sometimes even if you practice a lot, sometimes you just it's very hard to make a ball on those little tables when you play neighbor. Because I remember I was on the hill, I thought I was going to make a ball. I hit him so hard and I didn't make any ball. Steve Moore, I had him 6 3. He comes back and he runs three rocks without missing. He was breaking, making a ball. And makes a hill, hill. The only thing that saved me that I ended up beating him is that he came dry on his break. It was 6 6. He come back and, you know, make it even 6 6. He got on the hill. I got on the hill first. He comes, runs three rocks, and gets on the hill. And then he breaks, and he breaks dry. But I was already, you know, I was already, I remember that match, I remember I was already, you know, I, I was already, you know, you know, when you're cold and you're sitting down for three, three, three racks of able, you just, you had, yeah, I had to be warm up to be playing. I play better when I warm up, but once you're sitting down, you know, but that day, you didn't, it was in my mind. That's why your mind control had to, I cannot explain how much mind control you gotta have when it comes to the game because it's so hard. It's very hard. Especially when you're tired, when you've been playing for like six hours, seven hours. <clears throat> but sometimes you just gotta give that last the last thing that's inside of you it just comes out natural. You know. <laughs> and he breaks, and breaks right and I remember I got off the chair and I said, Well, I said, this is it, this is my chance. I have to run out. And I didn't have an easy run out. I had, I think I had like one ball that was giving me problems. I had to break it out to run out. But I wasn't thinking about it. All I say is, one, the first chance that I get to break those balls out, I'm gonna break them out. And I made a solid, I remember I had made two shots and then I had a chance to break the balls out. I broke them out. I ran out and I won the match 7 6, uh, seven, six. and then I was like I just looked at him and we shake hands and then I left and uh, and I had to uh, play the winner that he was I had to beat him twice uh, this guy was uh, Groundhog they call him Groundhog it was uh, it was the biggest hustler in Atlanta back in that time when he, you know, he was younger, 20, he was, like, he was, a, he was a one pocket hustler from Atlanta, a ball and one pocket hustler, very good player, I had beaten this guy, I didn't even know who he was, I had beaten him, uh, I came across on him, uh, cause back in that time I used to play a lot and I used to gamble, a lot too, <clears throat> I came across on him in another pool room, uh, they call it a star zone in Atlanta, and he had like a hundred tables in there. It was over here at Zuwani. And I had came across this guy named uh, Groundhog. Well, his nickname was Groundhog, uh, one of the biggest hustlers. I didn't know who he was. Like three months before we played in the tournament, before I had to play him in the tournament, I had came across him in, the, in that pool room. And he had a backer, uh, they call him Death Ball. There's a color guy, black guy. Both of them are black guys. He always run around with his backer, you know. He had different backers, but that was the one that he ran around with main, mainly. And I didn't even know who they were, and I was I was just practicing a star zone. Because I was supposed to play this guy, and he didn't show up yet. So I was waiting for him, I was practicing on the bar table, diamond bar table. Because I, I didn't know how they play, so I was just testing them out, you know. And, the, and then this guy walked in there, and I came across Groundhog. But that would be another story. 
uh, when I played him, but I have beat him. Uh, I remember him because I have beat him at starts on that tournament. Uh, it wasn't a tournament. We gambled, but there will be another story that y'all gonna get to hear. Anyways, it's the same guy that I have been before gambling about three months ago that I had to play in the tournament. His name is Grandma. And then, you know, we after I left, I was over there with my friends. I went with uh, my friends, uh, Joe and Marty. And they said, hey, come we got a cook over here, come and drink. And they were happy because, you know, I was going. Because, and they said, they, guys, they couldn't believe it that I beat the, the pro because everybody thought it was going to beat me. I mean, it's obviously, if I, if I get all this guy, I don't think I could win Stevie Moore. He, I think he, he would win at the end if we would gamble on that on those days because he was a pro, I wasn't a pro. But tournaments, like I told you, is only one set. So if you get rolls and you take advantage of your rolls, you're going to win. But, uh, you know, so a lot of times you don't take advantage of your rolls when you play pro and you're not going to win. So. I went over there with my friends, you know, they bought me a Coke, and I was drinking a Coke. And then I uh, I got a coffee too, because I, I was kind of sleepy, you know. And I was drinking, and then Stevie Moore comes over there where I was with my friends, and he said, what's your name? He said, what you say your name was? And he said, he said hey, he told me, he said, what, you, what did you say? I think he forgot my name, he said, what did you say? What did you tell me that your name was? And I said, Carlo. And then he looked at me and he said, do you know that you play real good today? And do you always play like that? And I said, uh, sometimes, not all, not always. That's why, you know, it's a difference between a pro and and a good player that pros are constant with their game. A good player, sometimes they play their best, sometimes they don't play their best. Sometimes it depends. Sometimes you play good, sometimes that's a different. The pros are constant. They have a discipline and they, they constant play the same. Constant. So he the Steve Moore comes on and he's on me, he said, Do you all he said I said, Well, sometimes I play like that, sometimes I don't. He said, I'm gonna tell you one thing, he said he said, if you play like that, he said, you can beat anybody in the world. He told me that. And I said, thank you, man. And he said, nice to meet you. And he, he shake hands again. And then he left. And then they called my match. To finish the story real quick, to make it longer, you know. They called my match with Groundhog. And, and I don't know if that had anything to do with it. That I, were, I have already been this guy gambling when we met in another program in our own Atlanta. So maybe, I don't know if that has something to do with it. You... I'm a, but I'm gonna give you an advice. Give y'all advice. If you're interested in playing the game and playing tournaments or whatever, don't misunderstand anybody. Even if you have been this person before, whatever. If you play the person again, even if you beat him in gambling, if you beat him whatever for a poke or whatever, and then you play in a tournament, this person don't misunderstand anybody. Not only because you have been this person before or whatever doesn't mean that you're gonna be this person all the time. That's what happened to me that day, but this guy, this man was playing real good. Uh, I had to beat him twice because he was on the king, on the king's chair, on the, on the winner. He never, on the hat seats, he never lost a game, uh, set. So I had to beat him twice, and it was like 5 in the morning already, 5 or 6 a.m. Close to, yeah, I think it probably was like 7 a.m. I think. So we have, we've been playing all night, and when I, f I had to face Groundhog, the quarter match, and we, st and we start playing. I mean, I remember I missed a few shots, like two shots, and that was it. This guy, remember we were playing winger break. This this guy took off. We start playing, like the first two games, it was close, 2-2. Two -two. And then he took off. And he, he got on the hill, 6-2. I tried hard, came back 6-4 six, uh, six, or 6-5. Six, I don't remember exactly. So I came back to 6-5, I think. Or six four six five I think it was six five and he won he won he beat me uh, seven five but I did make two mistakes that I didn't make you know prior to all the playing that I did the whole night I did make two mistakes with him and I don't know if he had anything had anything to do because I was tired or if he got in 
or if he got to anything to do that I was thinking that I had been this guy before, you know, gambling in another place. So I don't know what had, but your mind cannot, you cannot, uh, what you call that, you cannot call, uh, you cannot say that only, you know, you cannot, you always have to be alert on your game. It doesn't matter who you play, it doesn't matter who you have been before, whatever. And I'm, I understand I was tired because it was around 7 a.m. And I seen a lot of good players miss a lot of balls too when, they, when you're tired. But still, I cannot say that that's what I lost because the other man is tired. He was older than me back in that time. He, I think this, this guy, I think he was like either 15, 15 years older than me. So he was still, you know, but maybe he was used to you know, playing tournaments and because he was a hustler, he was he was a big time hustler in Atlanta. And whenever they hear the name Groundhog, everybody was like they were scared, especially in one pocket. He was a good one pocket player. I need to start practicing that one pocket game. It's just that you gotta have so much passion for that game. You gotta love it too. I like it, but I don't like it too much because it, it's very. I mean, I like chess. But I don't want to play all the time, you know. I play a couple of games, so maybe that's why one pocket is, is very uh, related to chess. Anyways, this guy beat me a uh, seven-five, guys. <clears throat> and I don't know what. I think that he beat me because I was tired, and then I was since I have beaten him before gambling. Probably that's why I too it has something to do with it. That I trust, you know, that I trust that I was gonna win the matches. I was like, maybe, I, you know, you have your brain in sometimes. Maybe, I mean, I knew it was gonna, it wasn't gonna be easy because I knew the guy was a good player, but still, since I had beaten him gambling, probably I, um, I trusted myself too much that I was a better player or whatever. Or, or I don't know what happened, but I lost. He beat me seven five. I ended up getting second place, he got first place, I got second place, Stevie Moore got third place. And to not make the story longer, that's what happened that day, at, I mean, at night over there, at 211 in Winder, Georgia. And it's been like over like around 18 or 20 years ago, it's been a long time. And I don't know if, I haven't seen Stevie Moore playing anymore. I think he retired. I, I haven't found out what happened to him. I know the Groundhog still play. Uh, he still play tournaments. As a, he's he's kind of old now, but he's still hanging in there. He's very old. And and that was it. Um, and uh, but we have fun playing the tournament, me and my friends. We went from that tournament, we went out of that, when we went out of the pool room, we went to Waffle House, and I invited you know them to eat, because I won the tournament. I ended up winning, since I got second place, it wasn't a lot, I think it was about 800 bucks, but at that time, and that time $800 was, was good money. <clears throat> so, if I would've got first, I think I would've got like 1500, 1500, it was like, almost double or not double but a little bit less than that so it was like around 13 or 1200 first place but I, I was I was happy because you know at least I got second place and I didn't stay there a lot of times when you go play a tournament you, you stay if you make it close to the finals you stay there play all all those hours and sometimes you get close to the finals but you get put out so you don't win any money because Sometimes they only play first to fourth. And when you get fourth place, you hardly ever, you get most of your money back that you invested in the tournament. So when you make, make a little bit, when you get third, a little bit, when you get second, you do okay. But when, when you get first is when you do good. But on that on that night, I didn't do that bad. Uh, I think I invested in the tournament about $100 with food in the tournament and drinks and stuff like that. And I ended up winning like around eight something. So I won like $700. So I call it a good night back in that time. 
<clears throat> and that was it. We ended up going to Waffle House, and then everybody went to their house. And, and that was the end of this story, guys. Let me know. Comment down if you like stories. I have a couple of more stories to tell you. But you need to, uh, you know, if you like the channel, if you like, you know, whatever I'm putting, hit the like button, subscribe, and let's see if the channel grows out more, you know. I gotta start doing some uh, some videos for my uh, Spanish followers. Uh, I only have one video, I need to start learning some more videos. Well, y'all have a great day. I gotta get out there and start doing something. You guys take care, take care of your family. I'm sorry for the video. When I was playing the ghost yesterday for not saying goodbye to y'all, the camera suddenly just stopped working. Like I explained to y'all, my, uh, my phone was, the uh, memory was full, but I'm gonna uh, try to keep my memory light. <clears throat> you guys have a, a great day. Take care of your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. Eat healthy food. Make your mind strong. Be a good person. Take care. Bye.